Hi, good afternoon, and welcome to all of you. Uh, you've tuned in to Out and Equals virtual session, Time to Pivot, Pride from Remote. A few brief uh, housekeeping notes. Thanks, Karina. Um, this is in a Zoom virtual learning session. Uh, you can use your speakers or headsets on your computer, and if you're having any trouble uh, following along, you can uh, certainly turn the volume up. Um, there are also written materials that will be shared after this, and so for anyone following along uh, who prefers to see this in writing, that's available to you as well. Uh, please, throughout the session, you're very welcome to use the question and answer And can always reach out to us directly at hello at outandequal.org. Oh, um, sorry, folks. My understanding is, uh, as happens on these Zoom calls, that uh, my audio cut out just briefly. Hopefully, it's back on. Uh, could my panelists just confirm that it's back on? Yes, we can hear you now, Dina. Thank you so much, and, and my apologies there. Uh, quick recap, this is being recorded, <laughs> mistakes and all, glitches and all. Uh, you can always reach out to us at hello at outandequal.org uh, with any additional questions. Okay, so today we are so excited to have a, a really incredible roster of people joining us. Um, in a few minutes, I will pass the mic over to our CEO, Aaron Uridis. Uh, this is Dina Fidas speaking. I am the Managing Director and Chief Program and Partnership Officer, and my pronouns are she, her. Uh, we also have Out and Equal Senior Manager of Stakeholder Engagement, Madeline Jelpy, along with Madeline Peru, our Senior Associate in Communications, and our other special guest, Jason Patria, noted speaker, facilitator, and consultant. And so um, I wanted to say a few words uh, of welcome and also let you know what you have in store for this session. Um, we wanna talk about why pride matters. Uh, we will then hear from Jason um, on how to think like a CEO, particularly in this environment. And then we'll be talking about Out and Equal's latest resource, Pride Out of the Box, an ERG, that's an employee resource groups, guide to celebrating pride virtually. And as we said, you are very welcome to submit your questions and comments throughout the session. And we'll also have some concerted points uh, at which the panelists are ready to answer your questions. And so with that, let's just take a few moments to think about pride and what it means to each of us. Um, I've been fortunate enough to work in LGBTQ workplace advocacy for the last uh, 12 and a half years. And right around June, uh, you know, I think a lot of people go through this. We sort of reflect on our first prides and what it meant to us. And for some of us, I know myself included, it was the first time I felt surrounded by people uh, like me or who at least had some key similarities in being LGBTQ. Um, or they were supporters. Um, how many of us have, have uh, shed tears the first time we saw proud parents or PFLAG moms marching in the parade, or the first time we saw members of our faith or uh, ethnic groups uh, marching in the parade with country flags as well as the uh, LGBTQ rainbow flag. And I think particularly in this moment, those key elements of pride, of finding community, of sustaining and supporting one another are more relevant than ever. Um, certainly our thoughts and uh, you know, our staff has been touched uh, personally by the COVID crisis and our staff's thoughts 
are, are with all of our uh, community members who are struggling right now, who've been affected by the COVID crisis, and certainly all of you who are working every day, uh, whether on the front lines in supportive roles or uh, at home. And so we wanted to gift, if you will, the community a helpful resource. And we reflected for ourselves, you know, what does pride mean to us as LGBTQ workplace advocates? And fundamentally, pride is about people, the individuals that make up your workplace, the individuals that make up your ERG, allies, LGBTQ members, uh, and more. Pride is also fundamentally about resilience. Pride was born out of riots in Compton's cafeteria, one of the first um, noted and documented uh, riots from the transgender community fighting back against transphobia and targeting by the police. Certainly we've also, uh, we often refer back to Stonewall and other milestone markers, but that spirit of resilience has carried us through the HIV and AIDS crisis uh, and other moments of, of shared um, tragedy for the community, and yet we've held on to our resilience. For so many of our workplaces, pride is also a moment to share information. Uh, you know, if, if you're watching closely updates to, for example, your company's benefits to include LGBTQ employees, or you're watching um, the, the uh, updates to your non-discrimination policy to finally include gender identity, we might take for granted as members of the community that everybody knows what our workplace is doing, but Pride actually presents uh, a really fantastic entry point to communicate widely all the ways that your employer is supporting the LGBTQ community. Uh, we also recognize the full diversity of our community and Pride celebrations, particularly those supported by employee resource groups, you know, would be wise to dig deep and, and uh, consider, you know, has our programming really highlighted um, and do we have an opportunity to highlight the bi community, um, the trans, non-binary and queer communities, and also the ally communities. Um, we do continue to see, um, you know, programming that, that tends to emphasize some of the same folks or, or folks that look similar. And while it's laudable, of course, to recognize our heroes like um, Harvey Milk, it's equally important to look across the spectrum of our intersectional identities and ensure that black and brown voices, Asian American Pacific Islander voices are all part of your LGBT pride celebration. And lastly, Pride, of course, is about individual expression. And so to that, and we're making these available, you'll notice all of us at Out and Equal have our wonderful Zoom backgrounds. We've made those for you. We welcome you to show your pride and express yourself uh, through these new virtual mediums that so many of us are using. So again, we're thrilled to have what are now uh, over 400 people with us from around the world. And in many ways, this virtual session is itself kind of a mini pride. Um, I'm certainly boosted knowing that there are literally hundreds of you tuned in right now, gearing up for the June celebrations this year. So with that, it's my uh, pleasure to introduce Erin Eurydice, our CEO here at Out and Equal, who's going to give a special welcome for a few minutes before we go to Jason. Erin? Hi, thanks Tina, and hopefully you'll uh, hear me okay. Um, I'm so happy to be with you today to open this call. As you can probably imagine, I'm not able to make it on every webinar we do, but I was reflecting on the topic today and I wanted to share a few reflections that came to mind for me personally as a way to launch into this topic of celebrating pride virtually. Um, so for me, celebrating pride was not something I was able to do while I was living in the middle in the Middle East for so long. Um, and due to legal and cultural restrictions, I was faced with um, what it meant uh, to not have this be a focal point in my life for nearly a decade. Um, and that was really tough, especially when pride celebrations were places to protest and also to celebrate big wins like marriage equality. Um, so when I moved back to the US with two little girls uh, just three months before the election of our current president, um, 
I was also just finalizing a divorce and I had not yet come out to my kids. Um, so I remember this moment so fondly when I was able to tell my kids and then to take them to their first ever pride celebration in Washington, where they were, a they were, were able to witness um, what pride in yourself and your family feels like, like Dina mentioned. Um, and it was an incredible moment for me and for us as a family. Um, so fast forward to last year, Out and Equal had its first ever float in the DC Pride Parade, and we had not yet entered into the actual route when as you may have heard uh, on the news, uh, the parade was disrupted with the concern that there was uh, possibly an active shooter in the parade. So after that moment, when we ran and I had to run past, um, you know, lovely queer people and allies, um, you know, decorated and, and dressed up for a celebration, hiding in trees and terrified, there was a moment um, right after that, that we heard this was a false alarm, but it was too late and the parade was over and everybody had run without the possibility to restart. And I remember this moment of pain, anger, and frustration um, that this experience had been taken away from us. And I recall having this really strong urge to grab my friends and to, rock, to walk the route anyways. Um, and it felt like a moment of um, solidarity and defiance and love to reclaim something that we, um, that we need and that we deserve. Um, so today we are here reclaiming the right to celebrate during uh, tough times. I'm so glad you're with us today and I want you to know that um, we will be here with you all year helping. Uh, we will all be figuring this out together. I hope this conversation today helps your ERG leadership design uh, a pride season that serves you well. And um, please keep in touch with Dina and the team uh, with the details as, as you make them so that we can highlight your efforts and share them with others in the Out and Equal community. I'm now going to turn it over. We have a wonderful list of speakers today. We're really excited and thank you all for being with us. Terrific. Thank you so much, Erin. Uh, and so to help get us in the right frame of mind and also give us some unique skill sets to lead this pride. We've got Jason Patria joining. Thank you, Jason. And right after that, uh, Madeline Peru and Madeline Jelpy will walk us through some of the foundational pieces of our new resource pride out of the box. So thanks so much, Jason. Of course. Hey, everyone. I'm super excited to be with uh, you here today. Thank you, Aaron, Dina, and the entire Out and Equal leadership team for all of the amazing things that you do, not only right now, but for the past 20 plus years. Now, many of you know me from talking about Think Like a CEO at the Workplace Summit, at Executive Forum, or even coming in and doing sessions with your own company. And today, I really want us to think about how can we think like a CEO as an ERG leader and a diversity practitioner? How can you put on that CEO cap to think about how pride matters right now? Now, I know what you're thinking. Your CEO has been thinking all about how do we survive? But eight weeks in, your CEO is now really focused on how do we thrive as a business? How do we thrive with our employees? And how do we thrive for our shareholders in this new world? So I want us to say goodbye to those survival mode things and really focus on thriving and making this year's pride a pride to remember. And not just because we couldn't go to things in person, but because we did things differently to make sure that our employees and our community was served during one of the roughest times that we can imagine. Now, many of you know me. My name's Jason Patria. I love to connect with folks. So you can see my LinkedIn QR code right there. If you want to pull out your mobile phone, either through the camera or through your LinkedIn app, you can scan that and we can connect and have great conversations um, offline. I'm really a keynote speaker, a facilitator, and a consultant, and I work with organizations and companies to make sure that workforce and employees are engaged by bringing their true brand voice to the table and bringing their authentic selves to work every single day. So I've worked with many of your companies to really focus on leading with your brand and building your professional brand and really transforming your ERG to think like a CEO. So normally during 
Pride Month, I'd be flying all over the place speaking at companies, but even I'm needing to learn how to pivot. Now, many of you may know that prior to launching my own company three years ago, I actually worked for NBC Universal for over 25 years with all of these amazing brands. Now, my day job was running NBC Universal's corporate university known as the Talent Lab with a focus on executive development. So I spent time really looking at how we move the top 500 executives up and across that organization. But just like you, I've had that experience of having both a day job and a gay job. So for over 14 years, I ran LGBTQ plus employee resource groups. So out at NBC Universal and growing that from just a one chapter uh, ERG in New York to 13 chapters worldwide. For a time, we were owned by General Electric. I helped co-lead the GE GLBT a alliance and then really helped Comcast launch their employee resource groups when they purchased NBC Universal. And one thing I will say is I would have not been able to do those things without the help of Out and Equal. I can remember being at my first summit in 2005 back in Denver, Colorado, sitting in a cramped conference room with folks that had just come from General Electric and NBC Universal to really come together and be inspired to grow our ERGs, get HRC 100s, and march in parades for the first time. So thank you, Out and Equal, and make sure that you're using all of their great resources. Now, similar to what Dina and Aaron talked about, I'm obsessed with pride. I went to my first pride when I was a senior in high school in 1991 in West Hollywood, California, and in in 1992, I started marching in Pride with the University of Southern California, and I've marched with Pride every single year since, all the way to, as you can see on the screen, last year I was honored to be the MC of the Walt Disney Company's entry in the Stonewall 50 Pride celebration and march in New York City. So I have to tell you, right now, I'm really bummed out. In fact, I'm kind of depressed that all of these in-person Pride events are canceled. Now, I think that you're probably feeling a similar way. So we're gonna do a poll. I'd love you to take out your phone right now and go to a site called menti.com. You can see that up on the screen and you can go ahead and put in the code 77585 as you see on the screen. I want you to put in there, what is one word to describe how you are feeling about pride given all of these in-person cancellations? I said that I was depressed. How are you all feeling? Let's go ahead and see how you're feeling. Okay, lonely, grieving, disappointed, challenged, well, a lot of people just sad, lonely, absent, forlorn, right? These are all things that I feel like we feel when we are in survive mode. Now, keep this mentee handy because we're gonna be doing polling throughout and we'll also make it available um, when we send out our information afterwards so you can see how folks are feeling. But as we move forward, what I really want to challenge you to think about is how do we move from that survive mode to that thrive mode? Now, I'm a huge fan of Mark Cuban. Many of you know him as the owner of the, uh, of the Dallas Mavericks. And I don't know anything about sports, so I admit that, but I love Shark Tank and he's a huge investor. So Mark has been talking all about branding lately and COVID-19. So take a look at this quote. He said recently, how you treat your employees today will have more impact on your brand in future years than any amount of advertising, any amount of anything literally you could do. He said, if you didn't take care of your employees or your stakeholders and put them first, you were that company. So I talk all about professional branding, and I think this is super important for us to think about. If you're running your ERG and thinking like a CEO with that cap on, you're focused on this right now. If we cancel pride at our organization, that's what LGBTQ and ally employees will remember for the rest of their employee experience. It doesn't matter that they've had an amazing experience the past two, three, five, or even 10 years that they've worked for you. How you act in this crisis is going to define that moment. If our company says, you know what, we've got so much stuff on our plate, diversity and inclusion, not important right now, 
that's going to be the lasting memory for your employees. So this is your chance as an ERG lead or a diversity practitioner to really come up and focus on how do we make sure that pride is meaningful in a way that engages your workforce in being successful during this difficult time. What I'm going to say is now more than ever, your ERG members, they need you. During times of crisis, our community is looking to leaders and you are a leader in your organization. Now more than ever, your members really need you. Now I'm a big fan of fortune cookies. In fact, every time I visit my friends up at Out and Equal in the Bay Area, I go to the original fortune cookie factory. Here is a fortune that I receive every now and then and I just love it. It says, a bend in the road is never fatal unless you never turn. So let's get that again. A bend in the road is never fatal unless you never turn. I can't think of a fortune that's more important than this right now. Because so many of us operate on autopilot. We are on cruise control running our ERG, especially Pride. For so many of us, we just rinse and repeat what we did last year. We've got our checklist for being in the parade and doing the festival. We know the volunteers we can count on. We can kind of like slap a new theme on it, put the rainbow stuff out, order the tchotchkes, and we're ready to go. But this year, we're going to drive off the cliff if we just think about being in cruise control and doing what we did before. Now's the time to put our hand right on the steering wheel and turn with this bend. So let's go ahead and I want you to turn with me. I'm a big fan of business models and in your business and even your ERG, we think about how your business starts out and you have great growth at the very beginning, but ultimately you start to plateau out, right? And we know that that might look like one quarter you're up, one quarter you're down, but over time you tend to plateau, plateau out in terms of your energy and event and the return on investment that you get. But right now we're here in a really interesting time. We're in an interesting time where we have an external force that comes up and shakes it up. This is not something that was in our control. It's not something we caused, but this is something that is like a 9-11. This is something that is like a 2008-2009 uh, global recession. And it's certainly what's happening during COVID. Now, if we go on cruise control, this is what happens. Our engagement goes down, our return on investment. If we play by the same rules, when those rules don't apply, we can be irrelevant. What I wanna challenge you to do this year is actually be like great businesses and businesses like the ones you work for that are saying the rules have changed, we have to do something differently and we can not only survive, we can come out better than we were before. So what I want you to think about is not how do we just get through Pride this year? How do you use this as the first Pride that you can go back to your CEO and senior team and say, we were able to reach every single one of our members in a global audience. You know what, this was the first Pride that we had participation from all of our other ERGs and huge numbers of allies. This was the first time we were actually able to reach those remote employees that never worked at a headquarters location. Let's use this as the time to do something completely different, bigger, and better. And when we can come back and do in-person events, we're going to have an amazing hybrid model. Now, I always talk about think like a CEO, and your CEO is thinking about three key things. And you probably guessed what they are. That's right. They are workforce, customers and consumers, and shareholders. And I like to think of this as like the circle of life for your business. And that is really that your CEO wants the best and brightest and most engaged workers so that they are delivering amazing products and services that are so compelling that your customers and consumers buy them, repeat buy them, and that drives our shareholder value. And when we have amazing shareholder value, that actually comes back to us. It comes back in headcount, it comes back in R&D, it comes back in new product lines and projects that we get to work on. Now, here's the thing, this always works and hopefully as you're running your ERG, you're thinking about this every single day. Are my initiatives and events driving engagement and development of my workforce? Is this about 
creating great products for our customers and consumers? And is this bottom line saving costs or bringing up the revenues of our company? But now is the time to kind of think a little bit different because I guarantee your CEO is thinking right now, I need my ERGs to really focus on workforce engagement. When my folks are working from home for the first time and they're distracted by loneliness or the hecticness of having an entire family and kids homeschooled at home, I need folks to help them stay focused, stay engaged, and also stay connected to the company. And when we think about doing things like for our customers and consumers, which we've been great at, think about those great pride parades and festivals we've done in person in the past. We were talking all about our great brands and products. We were passing out coupons and sending people to our online stores to buy rainbow product. You know, now's probably not a time to sell. Now's a time as a marketer, when we think of our customers and consumers to how can we show empathy and demonstrate that we're doing the right thing. So make sure that you're putting that cap on and really thinking about how we can do that. Now, I grew up on the Universal Studios lot here in Hollywood, California, driving around on a golf cart, um, playing around on film sets like Jurassic Park and all of those great uh, classic films. But I'm a huge fan of the business behind fun and entertainment. Now, I'm gonna challenge you to start thinking about how you program Pride Month thinking like a movie studio when they have a film slate. And this is their strategy. So you've heard that term before of a tentpole film, right? Those are those Jurassic worlds. They're the huge big budget films. And you know what? You can spend hundreds of millions of dollars on them because they have a big return on investment. But guess what? A film studio probably only puts out a couple of those a year. And think about it. They're those tent poles that are holding up the tent for the entirety of the year. So that might be the Memorial Day weekend film. That might be the 4th of July film, the Thanksgiving or holiday Christmas uh, Hanukkah release film. It's a handful of them, but they are the biggest and broadest that really get people out of their homes into theaters. Then, you know, they have those event films a little bit smaller, but they're all all about particular stories or star driven. You love the minions, you love Julia Roberts, so you show up for that, still fairly broad. What you probably don't think about is that they actually do more smaller films, right? And these are those portfolio films that have a much smaller budget. They're cost effective because they super serve a target audience. They tend to be the more niche oriented and have more crossover potential. So think about that. I'm a huge fan of the Pitch Perfect franchise, but think about that first Pitch Perfect was pretty much a small film. Most of the people in that were not celebrities or stars at the time. And it was something that was really marketed primarily for young women and the LGBTQ audience. But guess what? It had themes that resonated across that made it a super big hit and a part of the cultural zeitgeist. And then the final one there, this is something you probably don't know about, but I'm going to really challenge you to think about how you can leverage this for Pride Month and your ERG programming now and beyond, is something we call Rent-A-System. And this is where somebody else makes the film, and then the movie studio, they market and distribute it and get it into theaters. So they're responsible for getting the butts into the seats but they don't put the big financial investment of actually making the film. And you know what? If it doesn't do well, it's okay because I didn't put a lot of money into it or effort. If it does great, guess what? I get that huge halo effect. So think of something like last year's 1917, one of the best picture 10 Oscar nominees, actually created by a company called Amblin, and then Universal Studios actually released and marketed that film. Well, guess what? Universal got their name called at the Oscars when it was part of nominations and all of that and shared in that great box office. But it's a great way for them to balance their slate. Now, here's what I want you to think about. How do we apply this to Pride Month? So look here. We want to do a tent poll, one or two in June, 
and think about how we can actually bookend the month. These are gonna have more effort, more budget, but here's the thing, needs to speak to the broadest audience, combine multiple initiatives, and promote your event. So look at this, that first week virtual Pride Town Hall. Is your CEO participating? Your executive sponsor? Are you talking about big company initiatives? Are you involving a nonprofit partner in something that's broadcast to everyone? That might be a great example of a tent poll. And then many of you use keynote speakers to come in throughout Pride Month, but now's the time to transition that to virtual keynote speakers. In fact, Aaron and Dina, even myself, we're, we're already Already booked to do a variety of keynotes where we come in as an external speaker to talk to your workforce. Think about how you could do one big event at the beginning of the month, and perhaps maybe it's even two. So one at the beginning, one at the end that picks everything up. Now here's the key thing. That first of the month type of event needs to be big and it's promotional. You are going to advertise your entire 30-day slate of Pride programming. And guess what? When you get to the end of the month with that final tent pole, that tent pole is going to advertise all of the initiatives you're going to be doing for the rest of the summer and into the fall. You're going to use that broad audience to pull people in and engage them in some of the smaller initiatives, events, and activities that you do. Now we look at this, this event one, right? Like a star driven type of movie or a minions type driven movie. You can do these three or four, maybe even more, but this could be a once a week activity that you do during Pride Month. Now it still needs to have a broad audience, but you're probably driving people to it because of a particular cause, a theme, or even the personality of this person that's speaking. And here's what I love. When we talk about the intersectionality of our community, this is the great place to partner with all of your ERGs or choose one event throughout the month to partner with a particular employee resource group where you're bringing together intersectional elements. Think about this, that could be each month of Pride, you're doing a virtual career series with a unique career topic. That could be an online executive panel or speaker. You could do that twice a month. You could do that every single week. Now, here's the big thing. They don't necessarily need to talk about being LGBTQ. They could just talk about advocating for LGBTQ and things that are important in your company. And on that note, I love this whole notion of virtual business and product knowledge unveils or behind the curtain experiences. Not everything in Pride Month needs to be about being LGBTQ. It just needs to be contextualized for what LGBTQ means working at your company. So I see some of my friends from, uh, from Comcast who are on the call. Right now, Comcast is launching a brand new streaming service. It's in pilot called Peacock. What a great example of during Pride Month, could we have someone from that streaming service team come in and talk about how that pilot is going, talk about how it's impacting the business, and then contextualize it with what are the types of things that will be of most appeal to the LGBTQ audience, and how can LGBTQ employees help launch this product? Really interesting mindset shift. But again, these are all broad events that allies and those that don't necessarily consider themselves members of the community can opt into and find significant value. Then we get down to these portfolio films, and I think these are things that you can sprinkle throughout. You could do four or six, you could do even two a week. Less budget, less effort. Oftentimes, these are things to engage people that are really excited about particular things, particular themes, or particular communities. These could be niche-oriented, but again, they have that big crossover potential. So think about that virtual LGBTQ cultural competency sessions, our LGBTQ 101, our pronouns 101, our LGBTQ history 101. Those are all great things that can be sprinkled throughout Pride Month and even scheduled at different times of the day and the week to enable the most amount of people to sample those. This could also be targeted Zoom networking sessions, right? So instead of trying to get 30,000 people on a Zoom call, how do we target that? And maybe it's LGBTQ and ally employees in marketing sales doing a, 
a call. Maybe it is your finance team doing a call. Maybe it's by location, your Los Angeles office or your Miami office, or even taking something like Los Angeles and your Singapore or Sydney, Australia offices and doing a across the Pacific type of thing. It can also be about the, the breadth of our community. Maybe we do a trans and trans ally networking session. Maybe we do one for gender non-binary or by employees and their allies, right? Where that topic or that affinity is something that pulls people in. I also love this whole notion of you could do at-home volunteer projects that I'll talk a little bit more about. And then many of you have done screenings throughout the year where you brought in screenings of LGBTQ films right to your, um, your work sites. Here's a great thing. Now you can start doing these online screening parties where they're really targeted to particular audiences. Do you have something for families? Do you have something that's historical? And can you leverage technology so that you wrap an event around that? Now here's where you really need to focus is this rent a system. How can you pick up the work and partner with other people to make one plus one equal three? This is where somebody else has done the bulk of the heavy lifting and all you need to do is market it and make sure that it's contextualized for your workforce. Now, look at this. Out and Equal, they're gonna walk you through an amazing list of events that you can drag and drop and advertise and opt into for your company. If you are not taking advantage of those, you are missing out because these are highly produced events and they also give you a great halo effect of adding high quality events that you might not have been able to lift on your own. Now, there's also tons of other nonprofits out there that you can collaborate with. So I love to think about this in a hyper local level. We're doing global pride initiatives, but we can also still do those local ones. So are you partnering with your local centers, your local um, pride organization, so that what they're doing, you can amplify and share in the credit and be part of the big community. So that's what I want you to think about. What is your tentpole strategy? And how do you make this more than just a parade? How do you create this as a model that next year when those in-person events are back, we've got a whole hybrid event of reaching people both in person and through digital tools. Now, here's some thought starters to think about. Sometimes I think we, we miss some of these elements or they feel too hard to do in a virtual world. I talked about career development Here's something that we know right now, people are investing in themselves. They're listening to podcasts, they're hopping on webinars, they're reading books again, they're downloading things on Audible. This is a time when people are reflecting on themselves and their career. Super serve them this pride by delivering a career series. How can they learn skills that are gonna help them move up and across your organization? Now, even think about that. It could be leadership and professional soft skills, but it could also be about expertise. Who's someone in your ERG that is the guru of PowerPoint or the guru of Excel that can teach an expert level course for your members? Who's that person in finance that can come in and talk about here's how to do budgeting easy? And guess what? You have an LGBTQ or ally member that's actually teaching people a practical skill that they need. Are you leveraging your HR members to come and teach something about your performance review system or how to brush up on their internal CV through the system? Think about how we can use this time to grow people's career knowledge. Now, volunteerism, you all do an amazing job of going out and volunteering all year. And over the past eight weeks, that's been gone. But guess what? I think you can make this an amazing part of Pride Month. You can support your local LGBTQ orgs and they need you now more than ever. They are still serving the most marginalized people in our community that tend to be youth and seniors and those without shelter, healthcare, or 
or jobs ultimately. So think about this. Can I go and partner with my LGBTQ nonprofit and get everyone to collect the extra shopping bags that are around our house and send them in because your local nonprofit is looking for supplies like shopping bags so they can do basic meal delivery to their clients that are not supposed to come out of their home. How could you look at writing, uh, doing a Zoom party and writing 25 notes or cards that could actually be delivered to seniors or youth living at shelters who aren't able to communicate with folks? Could you do a phone bank where you partner and actually call LGBTQ seniors living in assisted facilities to check in with them and make sure that they're feeling well? How could you even do a client event? Maybe you could create a career panel on Zoom that goes out to their youth clients that now can't leave their home or are possibly being homeschooled. Um, either in a shelter or with their family. Think about being digital and social. What's your unique hashtag that you can go through the entire month? Is your company creating branded tools for social like these amazing Zoom backgrounds, which mine apparently likes to fade in and out? And this is a time for user-generated content. Have people snap their photos, do their own memes. How do you use that hashtag and bring them up onto your SharePoint site, your intranet site? Also think about these final two. We've got tons of families and allies that we need to include in this. And think about this. Every LGBTQ person is probably living with a roommate or other family members, and people are stuck with their kids in their home. How can you layer all of these events and initiatives to be family and ally inclusive? What is kid friendly about that? Are you including things with crafts, costumes, and bringing that into user generated content? Are you even doing, if you have a cool brand, maybe it's a coloring book pride page with your company's logo on it that's a downloadable PDF that kids at home can color, snap and upload to a SharePoint site or social media using your unique hashtag. And finally, think about virtual engagement. It's all about that two-way conversation. Are you using polls? Are you using chat? Are you using voting? I see us all collaborating in the chat here because it's being moderated right now. Tons of you voted using the Mentimeter tool. Think about that as you layer in. So that's my big picture strategy of thinking like a CEO. What I'd love to do now is turn it over to Madeline and Madeline from Out and Equal because now we can get granular and tactical and look at this amazing Pride Out of a Box toolkit. Thank you so much, Jason. I know that I'm feeling so excited about all the possibilities and ways to engage uh, during Pride Month, and I'm sure that everyone on the call is feeling so energized and excited for Pride. My name is Madeline Pro, and I am the Senior Associate of Communications here at Out Equal, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. Before we dive into the Pride out of the box resource um, that Madeline Jelpy, my colleague, is gonna go over in just a second, we wanna take a moment to hear from you all. So we want to know, what do you find encouraging about the LGBTQ community's quick actions to make sure Pride is still celebrated this year? So please take a look at the question on your screen and enter your responses in the chat function. And we will pause for just a second and let you respond. Um, and I already see some folks are entering in the chat. So if you don't mind, use the chat function to answer the question, what do you find encouraging about the LGBTQ community's quick actions to still make sure Pride is celebrated this year? So I'm gonna pause for just a second. So we have the ability to reach out to people who can't be there in person other years or who couldn't be there in person other years. Um, creativity, the fact that Pride is so needed in the community, the passion, Safety, this might be a safer way to celebrate Pride. That's a great point. The potential to turn this into Pride all year. Wow, we have so many responses, this is great. Out of the box thinking, opportunity to connect and a sense of belonging, safety again. Nothing will stop us, we'll celebrate Pride. This is all great to see. Let's do a couple more before we, let's see reach a wider audience, more inclusive, global, letting people know that we're here to help them. 
These are all great answers. Thank you so much for participating. And it's amazing to see that so many of you feel encouraged and hopeful and excited about Pride Month this year. Um, you'll have another chance to share some of your hopes and feelings at the end of the session. We'll do another quick poll like this. Um, but right now I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague, Madeline Jelpy to dive into our Pride Out of the Box resource. Thanks, Madeline. And thank you all for joining us today. Uh, it's it's really incredible to see all of these comments coming through, to see how motivated all of you are to re-strategize and engage virtually in Pride this year. Um, I'm the other Madeline at Out and Equal. I'm the Senior Manager of Stakeholder Engagement here at Out and Equal. Pronouns are anything respectful. Uh, and I have the pleasure of introducing you to our newest resource, Pride Out of the Box, an ERG guide to celebrating Pride virtually. And so through this resource, we, we really wanted to provide a set of tools, ideas, and engagement points uh, for employee resource groups and leaders to utilize in building those important virtual pride engagements this year. And so we recognize that, you know, many of you are reorienting your strategies uh, and coming to terms with a new world of work in the face of COVID-19. And so we put the resource together with that in mind and wanted to give you a comprehensive means of executing strategies to keep your members engaged, to build upon the key tenets of pride that Dina mentioned earlier in today's call, and to continue driving forward uh, that important foundational work uh, that you have continued to do throughout the year. Um, so within this toolkit, we provide a number of different ways you can engage and plan during this critical time. And as we mentioned before, and as my background says, I don't know if it's this side or that side, Pride is never canceled. Um, it's within us. It is within the work we do together. And together we are going to create something unique and something incredible for this year's month of Pride. Uh, I will briefly go over some of the information contained within the resource. However, we invite you to take a look at the full resource by downloading it from our website at outandequal.org. And I believe Madeline will share that in the chat box shortly. Uh, so share this with your ERG leaders, share this with your company, your membership, and encourage your network to get involved in this month's full calendar of programming. So with that, we'll do a high level overview of the resource. And we'll start with our pride kickoff. Um, in the resource, we present a number of different ways you can engage with us at Out and Equal. We have built a variety of new pride-focused virtual offerings that we invite you and your company to attend and utilize throughout the month. Uh, our very first event is on June 1st, where our CEO, Aaron Uridis, as well as the rest of our Out and Equal team, will be holding a fun and engaging kickoff to the month of pride together. So we'll discuss the history of Pride, um, why it's important now more than ever to continue to rally for our community, to continue to celebrate and elevate our voices, and to fight each and every day for that movement towards equality and belonging in the workplace. So this programming is a great opportunity for you and your ERG members to attend and watch together virtually, come wearing your favorite pride swag, and uh, it can really serve as a great touchstone for your group uh, to jump into pride together and with us here at Out and Equal. Uh, so next slide, uh, in addition to our kickoff, we are facilitating our very first Out and Equal Pride brunch break. Uh, we all know how important brunch can be during pride, at least me and my friends do, <laughs> and we want you to be a part of our shared celebration of pride during your lunch break at work. So uh, join us on Zoom with your favorite drink or snack, and we are going to use this time together to share stories of belonging and pride in the workplace, really, really getting at the heart of what this month means to so many and how it can show up in our daily interactions with colleagues. So again, come prepared to share and reach out to us at stories at outandequal.org if you have a particular story in mind that you'd like to share. 
Um, we're also excited to offer Workplace Wednesdays to our partners throughout the month of June. Throughout June, uh, we mentioned this uh, throughout the call, but it's, it's important to continue to drive that crit critical foundational work to achieve LGBTQ workplace inclusion. And at OutNequal, we wanna make sure that you have all of the programming you need to inform your members and keep them engaged in this work. So we have a few uh, time slots throughout the month where we can visit your ERG virtually and present on a number of different topics, as well as answer any questions you might have about that topic. So you can see some of the, uh, some of the topics on the side of the screen there. So best practices for non-binary inclusion, what's your pronoun, strategies for inclusion in the workplace, COVID-19 and the impact on the LGBTQ community, um, our latest mental health resource, which will be actually coming out next week, ally tips for engagement, and of course, a history of pride in the workplace. So to request a visit, you can check out the resource and our website where you can find the links to do that. And we will also be posting those in the chat box uh, on our Zoom call today. Uh, next, in the interest of continued partnership, um, we would love to visit you. Uh, out in Equal CEO, Aaron Uritas and our Managing Director, Dina Fidas, we will be conducting virtual visits to your workplaces throughout June and can speak on a number of different topics. But again, we would love to come to you to talk about the importance of pride and even more specifically, the importance of building cultures of belonging in the workplace, especially at this time. So uh, reach out to us at hello at outequal.org because we, we wanna come see you. Um, great, uh, within the toolkit, we also have a number of ways you can express your pride throughout the workday. Uh, so Pride Month is a great opportunity to ensure that your pronouns are added to your email signature and also by letting folks know that you're an LGBTQ ally. So we provide an example of this within the resource and um, it's a great thing to start in Pride Month and continue to do uh, throughout the year. Um, in addition, we have several Pride themed backgrounds you can choose from uh, to keep your Zoom festive and professional throughout the month. You can see mine behind me and my colleagues have demonstrated a few as well. So you'll be able to download that through the resource. And um, we also offer the ability to update your profile picture on uh, social media to continue celebrating pride with your colleagues. And so you'll be able to download all of these cool new resources through our resource um, pride out of the box toolkit. Uh, and I believe Madeline just posted some of that as well. Um, the resource also contains a number of activities and ideas you can utilize with your ERG through virtual engagement. Um, we are all particularly excited about these uh, items within the resource. So we provide a detailed list of these recommendations, including layouts for ERG meetings, specific examples of what you might do with your teams, both in terms of building engagement, and continuing again, that important work of building cultures of belonging at your company. So we encourage you to check out the resource for a full look at this, this programming, which contains pages of these ideas and tips for executing a great month of pride with your ERGs. Uh, on May 21st, we will be holding a pre-pride pre planning call. If that's not a tongue twister, I don't know what is. Uh, for ERG leaders, partners, and company leaders. And we're gonna walk you through this resource in even more detail, giving you additional insight into how to execute certain programming. So we'll use this call to facilitate collaboration and idea sharing, as we are gonna be asking our participants on the call to share ideas that they have or plan to implement throughout the month of Pride. So we will be there to answer any questions you have, to provide any support you may need moving forward and to connect you to uh, new content streams and programming as we approach June. One of the, uh, we can go to the next slide. One of the most exciting parts of this new toolkit, I think is our external calendar of activities that we've developed just for all of you. Um, we've culminated all of the recommendations and ideas for engagement during Pride Month into a comprehensive sample itinerary uh, and 
we hope that you utilize all of this to um, use in your pride planning. So you can feel free to adapt this calendar and make it work for you. But in essence, we want this entire resource to serve as a plug and play toolkit uh, so that come Pride Month, you're ready, you're prepared, and you feel excited about the month of programming ahead. So here you can see the calendar and you can see where we have a variety of activities from week to week that uh, your ERG can engage in. And again, we hope you utilize this in your planning process and that you can also fit in some of the out and equal engagements in your schedule throughout the month. So again, please download the resource for even more exciting content and programming. Please join us on our May 21st call where we will be able to uh, continue to support all of you in building an incredible and unique month of pride at your company. So we are so looking forward to seeing you there and uh, I'm going to pass it back to my colleague, Madeline. Thanks everyone. Um, all right, everyone. I know that we are almost at time. Um, I'm going to let Dina hop in really fast to to kind of wrap us up. I know we're five minutes till. Uh, Dina, do you want to hop in? Certainly. And thanks again, everybody. I'm just watching all of the incredible, um, all the incredibly positive messages come in. We are so pleased that this has been helpful to you. And uh, no doubt many of you saw Jason's name and rushed to RSVP. Um, Jason has been a dear, dear friend of Out and Equal and continues to motivate and energize people. So thank you, Jason. Um, in terms of the bulk of the questions have actually spoken to simply getting everyone's uh, hands on these resources. And um, we will also be sending out a roundup to the entire RSVP list. Everything that we send to you uh, is intended for uh, company consumption or organizational consumption. So please feel free to share the link to the recorded um, session as well as the resources there. Um, again, if you wanna be in touch with us at Out and Equal, the inbox is hello at outandequal.org. Um, looking in the chat box right now, Madeline Peru has uh, copied the link to the Pride Out of the Box resource. Um, a heartfelt thanks to all of you, uh, not just for filling the virtual room today, but for your daily support, your daily commitment to LGBTQ inclusion. Uh, I know in my heart that all of us will get through this. We will get through this together and we will cheers and celebrate in person soon enough. Um, but until then, we look forward to seeing you uh, in these virtual sessions as we have many more coming up. So thank you again to my colleagues and to Jason Patria uh, and to all of you who either woke up very early or stayed up very late from around the world to be on this, to be on the line today. Thank you so much, and we look forward to staying in touch over the next few weeks.